Thank y'all for joining in, guys. Uh, Valentine's Day is this weekend, so I thought it would be fun to do a recipe that was scaled down for two. So something that was kind of romantic. However, like all the things that we like to do, something that I think is very easy that you could put together at home. And honestly, you don't want to spend too much time cooking on Valentine's Day. Um, so I wanted to do something that is great, but can be put together very quickly. So I decided to do the classic New Orleans dish of filet mignon marchand de vin. And marchand de vin, this is classic French cooking that's been adapted in New Orleans um, to, uh, with that Creole flavor. And marchand de vin means the merchant's wine sauce. So New Orleans was a major port and boats of wine would come out through France and was used in all the cooking that was in the New Orleans culture. And this dish was actually made famous in Antoine's restaurant, still on the menu to this day. And it's just a filet mignon with a nice rich bread wine sauce. But I figured since we're doing dinner for two for Valentine's Day, I would have my Valentine here with me to help us out. So come on in, come on in boo, my Valentine. Guys, give a shout out to my wife. This is Teresa, that's my wife. Man, happy. Early Valentine's Day? Valentine's yes. coming up. Look, you know, Teresa, I was thinking, you know, I'm, after after this demo's over, you know, chef life, that it's going to be crazy busy uh, for me. So th th this is it. This is our Valentine right Pretty here. Much. So so everybody gets to see it with us. So so look, look, we're ready to get cooking. You know, I, you know, I used to pick on Teresa when we had first started when we had first started going out, and she had first started cooking. Guys, guys. It was rough, guys. Remember that apricot chicken you made that day? That was a little... It was a Pinterest recipe. <laughs> yeah. but, but you know what? It's, it's gotten good here. And I mean, first of all, how lucky. I mean, guys, you've won life's lottery, right? I, okay, mean, well, like, <laughs> I mean, look at this. And I can cook, right? People ask right? all the time if he cooks at home. Uh, no. No, no, no. Like maybe once. A week. Well, I did it okay. Every two But you, you've just gotten so good. I hate to take that. Oh, you were, yeah, so I mean, sweet. Come on. But anyway, <laughs> so look, look, I figured, hey, let's get going, and then I, we'll just kind of make this together. You're going to okay. be my assistant. I like that. Okay. And, and also, just like you, as we get going, stop me. You know, I like to try to think of what people might have questions about. And also, we're live, y'all. So my friend Jesse's behind the camera. Give me a shout out in our comments, and we're happy to try to answer them on air as we get started. But okay, so first of all, let's 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 talk about what we got going on. Filet mignon. You love filet mignon, yep. right? Um, so what this is is why this recipe is great is I love dishes where the whole thing is done in one pan. Quick, just like when I cook at home, oftentimes it's one or two skillets when you, you, you can throw something in there, make a sauce, and it's done. And normally when I cook stuff, it's pretty quick, right? Like I don't take too long. And I think what's cool, watch this, this dish is gonna be done in real time. We got our mise en place together, just which just means we got our stuff cut up, so we got real simple ingredients. We got some red wine, some diced red onions, some garlic, mushrooms, green onions, and some beef broth. That's it. So let's kind of go ahead and get started. First of all, you'll notice instead of using like a thick filet mignon, like this would be, this is, so this is beef tenderloin. And you'll see these are termidos, which they come from the end part of the beef tenderloin, and they're a little bit smaller. That's perfect for this because we're going to throw it in and cook the whole dish in just a few minutes. So it kind of cooks faster as opposed to a thicker steak, which would take longer to cook. Um, so, so these are about four, four ounces each. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to season them real generously with a little bit of salt and pepper on each side. So do you know why I like to use salt in a container as opposed to just shaking on to the meat itself or anything that we're putting? So you can control how much you put. Man, you've been watching our shows. Man, thank you for that. Man, that's 100% right. So I like here, if I'm just shaking with some iodized salt, I have no idea how much I'm putting in here. But, but whenever I'm actually sprinkling, I feel like I can control it. Now look, I got my skillet on. I got a large skillet. I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil in here. And that's going to get hot. Extra virgin olive oil, great for searing. Um, and then I'm going to put some butter in here. Now you can go straight in here with butter, but you got to be careful. I like putting oil first, then butter, because if I were to just distill it so hot, if I were to put this butter in here right now, it's going to burn instantly, and we don't want that. Um, so I got the olive oil in there. That's heating up. I got just a little bit of flour here, guys, and I'm going to dust these fillets in here. Now you were asking me before we got started, you said, I've never seen you dust a steak in the flour before. Sure. Well, the reason we're doing that is because we're going to make this sauce, this pan sauce with the meat. And since we're using broth, which is fairly thin, 
just having that little bit of flour on the outside is almost acts as like a room and it's going to help thicken the sauce. So that's why we're doing that. So, so everything has a purpose here. You feel like, come on, jump in and help, huh? But, uh, but look, so we got the olive oil in a pan. Now watch. Right before you're ready to go, we're going to put a nice scoop of butter in there. And look how instantly that starts to sizzle and get brown. And you want to be careful. You want that to get brown, but you don't want it to burn. But you still want to cook on high heat. High heat your friend. So I'm going to go in with this meat and just start to get some color on each side. Now, if you're wondering why I chose to use such a big pan for this, it's because, A, this is a recipe for two. And we're starting to get some color on here. But the meat's going to stay in here the whole time, and I'm eventually going to throw some of these other ingredients in. But I really want that meat to brown, so I don't want to overcrowd my skillet. So, so, I, so with this nice big skillet, I really have a lot of room to work with. Now, Teflon here is your friend. It kind of helps things from sticking. But you don't have to have Teflon. If you, just, if you don't have a Teflon skillet at home, just use a regular skillet. Just know as soon as you throw it in, hot skillet, hot, hot, hot. That, that helps everything from sticking, and it keeps you from having to, uh, and, and, and whenever I put the meat in, I like to just kind of drop the meat in and give it a quick little move, just to make sure it's not sticking, right? Okay. You with me, you with me, right? So look, uh, as this kind of browns off, Teresa, talk to me, boo. Uh, what, tell me what, what, this is what I said, what do you think, maybe even of some of the dishes you've had here, or what? what's your favorite thing I've ever cooked for you? What's something that you really like? Um, okay. He only cooked it once at home, um, and he—it <laughs> was when you were filming for. It was a TV show. It was something that had to be filmed, filmed in the house, and so he made my favorite, which is the crab cakes. His crab cakes, um, with mango, fresh mango. Now they are served here at Thomas' house, um, but he's ne he's never made them at home except that one time because I had to hold the camera to film it for him. And, oh my god, it was so good! It was delicious. I love your crab cakes. They're my favorite. Um, uh, oh, and your pastas are always really good. Um, my family's a big fan of when Jeremy makes the pasta because he can whip it out in like 20 minutes and it's a lot of vegetables. And yeah, because a lot of times when they think of pastas, they think of like something with a heavy sauce. Or spaghetti, it's just yeah. a quick saute of vegetables and olive oil, a little fresh cheese, a little pasta, and great, great, you know. Okay, so look, just catch everybody up. So look, just looking to get some nice color on here, and these are going to kind of keep cooking. But I mean, we've only browned it off for a minute or so on each side, so it's still pretty raw. But look, I've pushed them to the side now. So I kind of push them to the side, and then over here, it's like, it's like we're cooking a lot. Uh, over here, I'm going to add some onions. That's some diced red onions. That's a little bit of minced garlic. Oh, thank you. Thank you, sweetie. And some fresh mushrooms that I have here. Any mushrooms you have are great. We're a big fan of lose, using a lot of local ingredients. So a good friend of us from the farmer's market is Mushroom Maggie. We get an order of mushrooms from Mushroom Maggie every week, and we just love using them. So I'm just going to kind of carefully start to just saute this around. We're going to kind of start to sweat this stuff. When we say sweat, that just means to cook it so it gets a little bit translucent. You know what I thought to you? Yeah, guys, this is all in proper. We didn't we ever heard some of this. I thought you were going to say that my favorite thing was that foie gras cappuccino. Oh, that is, yeah, but you never made that at home. So that is, so you don't know this, but that's actually on our menu for the Carriage House restaurant on Valentine's Day. Oh, and so the, re great. the reason why I decided to do that was because I didn't know you loved it. I did. Yeah, yeah. I did that for you. Even though you won't be here. Yeah. Worry, worry, you <laughs> <laughs> so look, we're gonna uh, quick saute. We got our meat here. Now we're gonna add. Filet mignon marchand de vin. Marchand de vin means red wine. So we're going to add a little bit, I mean by a little bit, pretty decent amount. That's going to be the base of our sauce. We're going to add some of the wine. This is a Pinot Noir. And I'm going to get a decent amount of sauce in here and just have it start to simmer. I want that to come up to the simmer and start to cook down first. And by adding just that little bit of flour that we coated the filets in, it's, it, that's going to kind of, just those little bits of flour is going to act as a thickener for the sauce and start it to reduce. And I love this because oftentimes with filet mignon, you know, you know, oftentimes we do recipes and we talk about, oh, well, you know, we're about to add some beef broth in here, but oftentimes it's like, oh, we're going to have demi gloss. Well, your average person at home, they're not going to have access to demi gloss, and it's something that a lot of stores aren't going to have. So, so by having that flour, it helps kind of thicken this up naturally. Oh, it smells good. So, as, so, again, we're never taking it off a of high heat. We're going to let that reduce down. This is, see, the beef broth, just a splash goes in. 
I like to, since it's called filet mignon, Marchand de Vin, I like it to be more, the sauce base be a little bit more wine than beef. Smelling the beef broth. <laughs> so, so this year, so let's just talk about this for a second. This is just some beef broth that we had at the restaurant, but however, not to sound like a broken record, I say it all the time, you know, you can get all these ingredients at the store, and this would be a great thing to buy those boxed of uh, beef broths that you see in the grocery aisle, usually in the soup section. You can get some beef broth right from there, and it's going to be fantastic. And again, keep this on high the whole time because we're looking, the more this cooks, the more it reduces. We see all the steam coming off. That's what we want. That means the steam's evaporating and it's reducing down and it concentrates the flavor. But what we want to do is kind of now as it reduces, every now and then, give those steaks a little turn. It kind of helps it soak into the sauce and, and also cooks it evenly on both sides, right? So let's talk about... This is one thing that's like, you know, when Teresa does cook at home, almost always, what do you, what, what's my role when, at home? Let me see if you pick up on this one. Oh, uh, yeah, no. Yeah. So I can't tell if the steak is cooked right. And so our kids actually eat our steaks medium. Or even chicken or whatever. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, or pork or anything. Yeah. So, our kids, so, so our kids like our steaks medium, and I'm very like an overcooker because I'm worried that it's I'm going to burn it. Or, I mean, it's going to be raw. So I usually tell Jeremy to come and poke. She's like, can you come poke the meat? <laughs> so that, that's my official job at home when Teresa's cooking. But she's always amazed because I, I, all the time I look at it, I go, it's done. And you're like, how do you know that? And I mean, honestly, guys, it's really just experience. I mean, my job is cooking every day. I've probably cooked thousands upon thousands of steaks and this, that, and other. But I wanted to show you something. So check this out. Okay. See if you win. Okay. I want you to just get a little pump. Just give me, yeah, 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 yeah. You go eat it. So look. Okay. Okay. Got that it. one doesn't. Feel okay. Good. Don't look. poke mine. <laughs> <laughs> look, give your hands a wipe. Okay. See, see if you can follow me. This when you're cooking. Now you won't want to do this for a big piece of meat. But look, do this. Don't touch the side of your cheek. Okay. Rare. Okay. Oh. Touch right here. It's a little stiffer. Medium. Okay. Okay. Touch right here. Well. Well done. So look, rare. It's really kind of squishy. Medium. It's a little more firm. It's really firm here. So, look, what, what's so here? What you think? I, I know, I can tell, but where are we at? Rare. Yeah, yeah, but, but maybe this one's a little thinner. Medium. Eh, yeah, it's getting there. Yeah, I would say that's probably about mid-rare right now. It's kind of in between, so that would be mid-rare. I would say. So how do you like your steak cooked? Medium. Oh, I, I know, but yeah. Medium. Yeah, she likes medium, <laughs> yeah. But here she's funny. She likes her steak medium. She likes her burger did well, but then you order tuna tartare, maybe steak tartare. Yep. And you love steak tartare. I love steak tartare. And that's rare. That's raw steak. You figured out, guys. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, so look, this is basically it. So as this reduces, and this, you can see right now, the sauce is starting to get a little bit thicker. And this is basically done. When, you know, check the meat to see how you want it. Um, but, again, rare, medium, well done. And then now I'm just going to turn it off. And then I like to come back always, just have a little bit of seasoning, come back with a little bit of more salt, because we never really seasoned the sauce itself. A little bit of salt. And bit, oh, here it is. A little bit of black pepper. <laughs> it's like at home when I can never find nothing, you know? <laughs> or I, and, keep, I keep picking it up as he's cooking, and he's like, stop it. I still need it. And then, look, we're, we're ready to plate this. Now, look, I, I just went and just quickly boiled in water and then seasoned with a little salt and pepper, some asparagus. Perfect for this. So I'm going to put some of those asparagus down. I'm going to take one of these steaks here. This is that medium steak you want. It's about that one. It looks, yep, yeah, that's about medium, too. We're going to put that on there, and then, of course, we're going to come back and really generously put a lot of sauce. I like having a lot of sauce, and we're going to get that on there. Now, watch this, Teresa. Now, since it's Valentine's Day, if you really want to take it to the next level and add a little garnish to your dish, right, you know, you know, like I do at home all the time, have a little garnish, then watch this. Did you know that roses are edible? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So rose petals are totally edible. So don't get crazy with it, but watch this. We're going to do a chiffonade of rose petals. And this is just a great little touch that you can do for Valentine's Day. So look, I'm going to take a, just a couple petals of rose, a couple rose petals, roll them up, and then give it a couple little slices. So look, we don't want to overbear it, but just a great little garnish to have a little fun on Valentine's Day. Add a nice little pop of color. We're going to sprinkle a couple rose petals on it. And there we go, boo. This is your Valentine's dinner. Enjoy. 
Thank you. But uh, so so here we go. There's our filet mignon or tornadoes of beef marchand de vin. Now this would be great for Valentine's Day. I also wanted to double back if you're looking for a more full meal that we could have um, for Valentine's Day. We've had a couple demos that I think would be perfect. If you want to do a multi-course dinner, look up on our Homeless House website, and also we've done cooking videos that you can find on our Facebook page under the videos tab. I think the Yukon Gold and Oyster uh, Soup would be a fantastic starter. Then you'd have, this is your entree, and then I've done the Bouche Noir, which is a chocolate flourless cake, would be a perfect Valentine's dessert. So look, I've done all the work for you. Or you just come to Homeless House and eat as well. But, uh, but that's it, guys. One bit of housekeeping. We're going to be out of town next week, so we're going to be out of town next week. So Jesse's going to post one of our oldie but goodie cooking demos next Thursday that, we, that we've done. And uh, other than that, we'll see you then. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Love Day. you, boo. <laughs> we'll see y'all next week. Bye, y'all.